Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee and Ink and welcome back to Printer's Corner. This is where I answer all your questions a little bit more in depth from all the questions that we get on social media. If you want to add your own question in, just use hashtag Printer's Corner. And if there's a specific part of the video that you want to look at or that we've answered, please use the timestamps in the video to quickly skip ahead and just get the information that you need. Or actually just watch the whole video because I might say something that you didn't know you needed to know. So we've got three questions. They're about what emulsions and ink choice. Then we've got tips for printing white ink. And lastly, is there a difference between pre-mixed or should you use a Diazo emulsion? <laughs> to start off with, we've got Hunter Mum 710 and they've asked What's your emulsion and ink of choice? I'm going to say the majority of our prints are done in plaster sol ink. The reason I'm hesitating is because we actually get into water-based and solvents and all sorts and we're actually quite broad in our specialism. However, day to day, most of the videos that you see us do on YouTube, you're going to see us printing with plaster sol inks and then it says, what is your emulsion of choice? So. I have quite a few emulsions again, depending on what I'm doing, but my main go-to is called Azacol Z1. So this is actually quite a specialist emulsion and many of you might not even heard of it. So the reason I use that one is because I send screens out to all around the country to lots of different people and I don't know what inks they're going to be using on the screen. So I've tried to find an emulsion that's as resistant as possible to water-based inks, plastic solvents. Some people even print on glass with enamel inks. So it's like a really good um, resistant emulsion that holds really fine detail. So it almost doesn't matter what image they send me. I know that I can use Azacol um, to expose their screens and I know they're going to have a good time with it. However, there are lots of different emulsions and it depends on what you're doing the most work with. So if you know you're going to be printing lots of plaster link, you never want to touch water-based, you can actually choose a broader selection of emulsions that aren't going to be worn away with the water-based um, inks getting on them and breaking them down. And then plaster is because we actually do quite a lot of commercial work and they often want vibrant prints. Um, they often want like bold graphics, maybe like huge white print on a black hoodie, for example. And we just found that Plasso was the easiest way of getting the best results for them. And then uh, we just do know about water-based as well. And we've got YouTube videos specifically about that. So it's not that we don't know about it, but that's just what we tend to gravitate towards for customers. Our second question is from Isaac Archuleta, hopefully I said that correctly, and they've said, do you have any tips for screen printing with white ink? In the video where they asked that question, we were printing white plaster ink onto, um, I think it was just a t-shirt. In general, when you're printing with white ink, what you're trying to do is make a nice, solid, opaque white to cover up any like, coloured garment that you've got going on underneath. I would say my main tip for printing with white ink is to actually print it in two layers. Print your own white underbase. So what I mean by that is just do your first flood and print. It almost looks grey on the garment because you haven't blocked out the colour of the garment yet. So don't worry about that. All you're doing is priming the shirt on making a smooth down layer. Then what you need to do is partly dry that. You don't want it to cure it all the way through. You kind of want it very slightly tacky. When we're doing it on the flash, we would move the platen underneath the flash just for a few seconds, pull it back, and then we'd test it a couple of times to see if it's touch dry. We don't want to like overcook it or anything because we want the next layer to be able to stick and adhere and build upon our first layer. So then we'd bring the platen round from its flash where it's just touch dry and we can flood and print our next layer on top. And then when you've done the second layer, because you've got that first primer, then your ink is going to look really nice and vibrant and white. So in order to do all that printing, flashing, moving the, the screen up and down, the thing that is really, really easy to forget 
but really important for your printing is holding the t-shirt in place. When you're moving the screen up, you're not lifting the shirt and then the shirt might fall in a very slightly different position. We do that with dual sided palette adhesive. It's basically like a double sided sticky tape that we put on our platens. And I've got it just here. So it's basically holding down the t-shirt for us. It's also protecting the platen. And uh, we just draw our registration lines even underneath it so we can line our t-shirts up nicely. It holds the shirt there for us for many, many prints. And then if we need to reinvigorate it, we can just quickly rinse it with some water and then it's basically like having fresh adhesive on our platens every time. If you can't quite stretch to getting the dual tack stuff, some people use a spray adhesive or even like a water-based adhesive on their platens. But hold the shirt down and build your layers up of your white ink in layers, in thin layers. Don't try and just do it all in one print because if you print and print and print, you're just moving ink around and you're not building it up and you might not even get a really nice, rich, even deposit of ink. It's much better to layer it up. If you want some more in-depth videos into that, we have done some on YouTube. And if you're not specifically asking about Plastar Link, we have done a video all about white inks and which ink to choose for which garments and that type of thing, which is a really important subject. So hopefully you'll check that out if you want some more detail. Our third and final question for this episode is from what? And there's lots of H's and T's. And they said, is there a difference between that and premixed? And I think what they're referring to is which emulsion should you use? Should you use the one that comes in one pot or should you use a Diazo emulsion? Diazo is this thing which is basically an activator and it makes your emulsion light sensitive. So let's talk about the photopolymer emulsion first. This is basically just a one pot emulsion. Even when you get it, you've opened it up. It can last for like years, like probably about two years on the shelf. And it's not like deteriorating. However, it is more sensitive to light when you're coating and all that type of thing. You just have to be really careful about not exposing it to light prematurely on your screens. That might be the reason why some people think that we're being a bit blasé about having our light in our room when we're coating screens and things to show people on our videos but we're actually normally doing that in a dark room but with photopolymer you have to be really really careful with exposing it to light because it exposes very quickly and the reason it exposes quickly is because a lot of people are using leds and um, very specific wavelengths to expose their screens now so if you went into a place that just prints plus or link and they print hundreds of different images every day, they're going to be using a photopolymer emulsion. Like I'm almost guaranteeing it because they need something that exposes in seconds, not minutes. And they want something that's resistant to plus or link. They don't particularly mind whether it's resistant to water-based because they're probably not even printing with water-based. And uh, they just want something that's getting the job done. And also, most of the jobs that we're given as commercial screen printers aren't crazy fine details and incredibly fine half tones and all those types of things. They're normally like logos, uh, vectors, graphic things. So that's where using a photopolymer, one pot emulsion that sits on your shelf for ages and just, you know, you never have to chuck it out because it's dyed. That's where that would come in useful. So the one that I use is actually a bit different because I have to cater for lots of different prints. I coat screens and send them out all across the country for all types of printers. And they might be using water-based one day, plus sol the next, solvents, all sorts. And then they might even be giving me crazy half tones and um, or vectors or something that's really adaptable. And that's where the Diazo mixed emulsion comes in really handy. So the emulsion that I use in the studio is called Azacol Z1 and it's a dual cure diazo emulsion and that means that it comes with a little pot of sensitizer which I mix with some distilled water. I put that in and then that adds to all the things that are already in the emulsion making it really really strong and resistant to lots of different chemicals. There is drawbacks to using it. I have to use that pot within 12 weeks of, of actually like activating it with the Diazo. 
So if you're a very small studio and you're not going to get through a whole pot, even a kilogram of emulsion, you might need to move over to the photopolymer to be a little bit more economical, but you have to dial in your film positives a lot more. If you don't think you've got great film positives, you need a little bit more leeway with your exposing, then using the Diazo mix emulsions that you can get from your normal suppliers um, might be the way to go. And if you're one of those people who are using water-based inks and doing like really fine half-tone work, then a Diazo emulsion is also going to hold more detail because it's just, it's just a superior emulsion that most, most studios don't need and they're just not going to see the benefits day to day. I know, sorry, that is a little bit confusing, but just tell your screen print supplier what you're going to be doing day to day and they'll really quickly point you towards the photopolymer or the dual cure emulsions. Hopefully I've answered your questions about emulsions and ink choices and hopefully guided you a little bit more on printing with your white ink. Uh, if you've got any more questions, then just use the hashtag Printers Corner. And we actually do have some very specific courses on how to mix dual cure emulsions and uh, exposing screens and that type of thing. They're a little bit specialist, but if you're ever having problems in those areas, we do have courses on the squeegeeinc.co.uk website that will really help you out and um, yeah, might speed up your processes and get them really dialed in for creating really great screens.